Hi guys, today I'd like to talk about strut braces and uh, I was a little sceptical as to whether or not they worked or not. So today we're going to do an AV test and see if there's actually any uh, flexation in the frame as uh, I jack up the car to have a look. I've already fitted these, I've actually got one on the top and I've, I've got also one on the bottom. I'll show you that in just a minute. So I've currently got them disarmed and as you can see it's loose. I actually built this one myself and uh, the bolt that I've used is one single bolt that runs straight through the whole system and it is in an alignment along the side here. So we're going to be able to measure when we jack it up and see how much tension we can put on the car, whether or not there's any flexation in this point. We're also going to have a look underneath and see if there's any flexation underneath as well. Alright, so let's go. Alright, so here's the other side here, down the bottom. I built this myself and uh, when I did this, uh, I welded it in place, so it was absolutely perfect. And what we do now know, jacking it up, is that there's about two millimetres difference. You can see there, there's the bolt inside. There's no way I can get that bolt on right now. But when it's up straight and even, it uh, is easily fitted to it. So there's two millimetres, it's flexed across that point. Now that's actually on a steel cross beam that runs all the way across and underneath the car. So it's not the uh, suspension or the rubbers or anything like that we're measuring here. It is actually the main beam underneath the, ha uh, underneath the car. All right. So as you can see, the car is jacked up quite considerably and I'm underneath that, but you'll see, I have a second jack under here to make sure that I'm safe. Just maintain that whenever you're doing any works on your vehicle. All right. I'm going to jack it up on the other side now and you're going to see what happens. Okay, as you can see it's spread apart and it's about a mil, mil and a half. Now it's actually flexated more on the bottom than it has on the top on this side. So there's a variation between the top and the bottom. All right, we're going to now just jack it down, put it down onto that jack that I've got there because I noticed before when I put it down onto the jack, onto that uh, stand over there that the front of the car sagged down. So we're going to test it again under that scenario with one of those in place and see what happens. So here was our last test. We've jacked it up, we have the top brace is on, so the top strut brace is now connected and the bottom one is, as you can see, um, back and is possibly reasonably close to being able to just put it on, as you can see. A little firm, it always has been, and it goes on perfectly fine. So, what we've proved there is either a top brace or a bottom brace actually does its job. All right, so we've lifted it up and we've tried this out. We've tried out the bottom suspension um, sway bar, which is attached all the way through, um, which was put in place a while ago uh, without the top done up and I found that there was no difference. When I put the top done up and have put it on an angle like this, I found that uh, the bottom fitted in nicely as well. So either the top brace works or the bottom brace works on its own. But um, taking into account that we're not having a, any sort of live load on this, so we've not got any cornering pressure on it, um, it's hard to tell. Now I thought there might have been some G-force equivalent that we've um, taken into account by jacking the car up like this. We probably have, it's hard to say. I measured the tyre pressures when the car was standing on the ground and um, when it was all put on, the load was all put on one side. Um, I had nine and a half pound pressure in beforehand and when it was all loaded on one tyre on its own, I had nine and a half tire, uh, pound pressure as well. So there really wasn't, uh, it, was, it was marginal if there was anything, maybe a quarter of a pound pressure difference in it. Um, hard to read in that way. So I do think that this works. Uh, in this case, I was recommended this by my, um, my suspension experts. Um, I use Pedders for my suspension and um, they recommended that I put one on the top and one on the bottom. Now I do know that what their recommendations suggested was true. I would never have believed that that cross fender underneath would have had any flexation in it, and it certainly has. So that's absolutely blown my mind that, uh, that there is that much difference in it. But one brace on, from the top or the bottom, will brace the car enough, 
and uh, in my sort of application, I've gone both. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, it's obviously worth it for a track car sort of application. Um, for normal road use, I don't know. In this case, the car is 450,000 kilometres old. It's had a hell of a life. Um, it was crashed when I bought it. All the front was all crashed in. It's still not the greatest looking car and it's a little bit kinked still. So the shell is a little bit tired. So this is a perfect example of something that you can use to, um, to um, measure these on, this sort of application. Um, in every scenario, I've tried opening and closing the doors and they all close and open beautifully. So there's not that much flex in the car. It's a, it's a stiff shell. I believe from the factory. So, um, yeah, I'm going with that as being that uh, there is some variation. Um, take into account that uh, when you're going into a corner, you might have more loads on the bottom than you may on the top. So, there may be a variation in that which I can't measure in this sort of scenario uh, unless I was doing live testing out on the track and having something loose and measuring it with the camera then. Um, there's nothing that I can actually measure. So there may be an application where, where the pressure from the vehicle is pushing the, the inside, um, pushing the, the lower um, arms and uh, the top may be flexing. Uh, that's really hard to tell at this point in time. But 3mm, top and bottom, in both cases they were extending outwards under this sort of application. Okay, to summarise, I've done a couple of drawings here to, to indicate what's going on. Here's a view looking from the front of the car. And here's looking down onto the suspension from above. You'll notice that there's the steering is set up here. And um, there is my strut brace at the bottom. And my strut brace at the top is indicated through here. Alright, so having a look on this view. We know that there's 3 millimeters of play at the bottom. And there was 1.5 millimeters at the top. How does that affect it? What we end up with is the opportunity to see that. With three millimetres of play this way, we could end up with a situation where we end up with camber. So I indicated here with a dotted line. We could end up with the wheel on an angle like that instead of being where it's supposed to be. Likewise, more importantly, you could end up with a situation where you have the steering going out. Three millimetres of play could mean that you end up with toe out or toe in across the back because whilst that's moving at the front here it may also affect and will also affect your steering because the steering isn't being flexed at all it stays in a solid position wherever it is at the time so it's likely to be the a factor that then changes so because the the front is moving and the back doesn't it'll either pull, pull out or pull in that would indicate though that uh, you would uh, have trouble going around corners say in a roundabout situation in a front wheel drive car you may end up with a situation where you're understeering as a result by having that much of a, a difference in um, in angle i know that, that three millimeters was quite significant in the form of racing that i do so um, when we got the geometry correct it made a huge difference in reversing and um, and steering so if you uh, have enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you've got any comments or suggestions at all, um, or any ideas on how to measure this any differently, um, feel free to put your comments in below. Been appreciating your comments on my other videos along the way. And uh, happy motoring. Thank you.